So this is a quick look at different options available for controlling your automated home. There are many home automated products available these days and with the ex ever expanding amount of devices there's an ever expanding array of ways to control them. One of the most cost effective and most simple ways of controlling your home automated system is with an Android tablet. Um, very customizable, very flexible and much more so than the tablets which are available from Apple. There's also many different tablets available at many different price points, which again means there's probably something for everybody's budget. This particular tablet is a Huddle 2, a very, very nice tablet. Um, the screen is superb, it's a full HD screen, and to actually use one of these, they look superb, they're very, very nice. They're available for less than £100 as well, so it means it's a very, very cheap way of having a nice, speedy tablet. Um, that doesn't slow down, doesn't suffer from lags, but for a very, very cost-effective um, amount of money. Great for wall-mounted units. I have a couple of these mounted on the walls. Also great for cupboard-side units um, by the TV or by your favourite armchair, just so you can control everything in your house. Um, because it's fully customizable, you can make it look and work exactly as you would like. And in this particular demonstration, this is one that I just set up a couple of days ago. It's not completely finished yet, but it gives you an idea of the work in progress. So let's jump straight in. The first thing you can see here is this particular tablet runs an app called Daydream Screensaver. And this comes built in with the Huddle, but there are various apps which have got similar functionality in the App Store. Basically, when you don't use the tablet for a certain amount of time, this app flicks up another app, um, which is basically a screensaver. So it can show photographs, it can show weather moods. In this particular instance, this is an app called Timely, which you can program to be any color background you like. And you can see there you've got things like streams of bubbles and moving uh, orbs. And it's, it's quite, a nice, um, quite a nice app to have when the tablet is uh, docked or just not in use. To come out of that, all you do is touch and this takes you straight into whichever home screen you've set up. And in this particular instance, you can see that I've set up two screens. Um, all I'm doing is using the tablet for controlling the home automation system. And in this instance, we're running a Z-Wave network, which is controlled by Vera and Imperi Home. I'm running Netatmo for temperature control. We're running Sonos for music and Harmony for control of the audio visual gear. So let's just take a look at the setup. So here the screen is set up using Nova Launcher. So I've swapped out the standard launcher. Nova Launcher is fantastic, very customizable. Um, helps the, the tablet run a lot faster and a lot smoother. And because you can change the number of rows and columns, it means you can change the size of the icons for the apps which just really lets it be fully customized to exactly as you would like. So on the screen here, this is a standard Netatmo widget. Um, again, customized and set using the features that are available in Nova Launcher. So we've got four different temperature points. We've got the lounge, the conservatory, the bedroom, and the outside weather temperature. All showing on the screen, all available in one place, and it shows you the minimum and maximum temperatures that have been available in the last 24 hours as well. I'm also running the BBC uh, weather widget. This is a great little widget and touching it launches straight into the app. And it's a very nice app actually. It's a free app and it shows you the weather for wherever you are um, for the next week or so. And if there's any weather warnings, it will also show those. And it's very, very nice. Um, and also very, very accurate, which is important for a weather application. Sometimes the uh, more pretty looking applications are not so reliable in terms of the weather forecast. So the Netatmo widgets give you everything you need at a glance. If you need to go into the actual application itself, again, I can press the button, dive straight in, and get more of a drill down of the data and the information. And one nice feature Netatmo has is they also have a weather map. So if I click on there, it'll go onto the internet and it'll download the weather map, which shows me data from other weather stations. So we can see there all of these different temperatures. Um, Let's you take a good view of what's actually going on in the microclimate around you and you can zoom in and zoom out to find uh, different weather or you can touch and find the particular details of a station. So that's the weather app and in Britain we are obsessed with the weather so it's nice to be able to get some good details. Other things we have on this screen uh, I'll touch on later but I've got Skype, um, always useful to have. And you can see there, touch it and it launches straight in. 
and I've also got the Sky application for controlling the Sky TV box, which again we'll look at uh, in a little bit more detail a little bit later on. So that's the weather function. Um, to scroll across to the next screen, again I can just do this, and this is where I've got pretty much the Sonos widgets all set up. Now it is possible to have one widget control more than one room, and you can see there you can click and it brings up the options available, but to save having to click and mess around, I've got room on the screen to have all four Sonos systems on the screen at once. So if I want to access anything that's on Sonos, I can click and this takes me straight in. And then it's just a case of going through the standard uh, the standard Sonos menus that you would find. It's very much a click and point and as you can see the app is uh, very responsive and, and the tablet's got a good speed to it. So to come out, I could just retract out of the app there. So this lets me get into Sonos. I've also got Sonos actually on the menu bar here so I can also access it anytime I like should I not be in this screen. And with this being Android, there are some certain built-in features which mean that things are available really easily. So again, I can swipe down and it's also in the menu bar if I wanted to access it from there. So I'm never stuck with a way to get at my music instantly. It's either a gesture control or an app flick away. And the Sonos app itself is very nice. It's a free app and for anybody using Sonos, you'll probably be quite familiar with it. It's certainly nice to have it available on a tablet. It means you're not always having to find your phone and uh, find a way to control that. It is worth saying as well that if you also have the Harmony um, remote control itself, uh, which I do have here, this also will let you control Sonos. Um, as you can see, it's touch screen. It goes through and it tells you what's currently playing, but it is fair to say that the app version is probably a little bit easier and more convenient to use than the remote control. That said, having a remote control that you can pick up and just press off or on or pause is also useful. And because the two devices do sync across the Harmony Hub, it does mean you can use any of them and the other one will be in sync, which means you're not always having to head for a tablet if a remote control is closer. So that's the music side of things. As I said, in this particular instance, I am running uh, Nova as the standard launcher. This gives me lots of customization options, and it also gives me gesture control, which means I can access apps just by a flick of the screen. So let's dive in and look at the Harmony app we were talking about there. I have this set up with a double tap. So a double tap of the screen takes me straight in, and you can see that that dives straight in. In this particular instance, I'm already listening to Sonos, and all of my Sonos controls are there. Should I wish to control any of the AV equipment, that's all down the side of the screen, and I would select which item I wanted, and all my standard controls are there. So again, it's really nice to be able to control things without having to dive in and out of different applications. There is full control for Sonos in the Harmony app, and as with the actual remote control, they've also got gesture control. So you can pause, you can play, you can fast forward, you can turn the volume up and down. There is a whole list of gesture controls which are fully programmable. And if I press that, you can see there, you can do one finger, two finger, and you can create whatever gestures you like. The difficulty is just remembering which gestures do what. So pretty much the way I've got this tablet set up, I can get into Sonos and can control the music at any time I would like. I've also set up shortcuts in Empiri Home to allow me to dive into Sonos and the gesture shortcut I have to get into Empiri Home is a swipe up which you can see I can do there and this launches me straight into the Empiri Home application and I have Sonos set here so if I wanted to dive into Sonos I can dive right back. This is a really nice feature of Empiri Home being able to launch apps because it means that you don't always have to jump out to the home screen on the tablet you can pretty much use the Empiri Home home screen as the main screen on the tablet. So let's look at Empiri Home whilst we're here. This particular system is running my Z-Wave network. Um, fantastic system, very reliable. Empiri Home as an app is constantly updated with some very, very, very nice features. It has a wake on camera feature, so if we don't play with this for a little while and we happen to walk in front of the tablet, it would come back alive. That's very useful for wall-mounted tablets, and you can turn that on and off. But basically it gives you full control of your home automation system so we can see that we can turn lights on and off and, and the status is updated. The layout of the screen you can control to be exactly as you like and again you can have screens which you swipe across and as you can see here I'm still setting these up. 
but the tablet and the app run at a very nice speed. You can also set composite switches, which are virtual composite switches. So we can see here I've created a switch which says TV. And if we watch these three particular switches here, just a press of this, will actually turn on three switches and you can see all three switches have come on to on. Very useful for things like lights. You can see I have a switch here called visitor and if I click that onto on, um, two or three lights will come on together from this flick of a single button. And if I turn these off, you can see that all three have gone back off. Um, Imperial Home is great. It's one of the best applications, for my, in my view, for running home automated systems. And being able to run other apps is perfect because it means that we can dive in and out of different things we would like to do very, very quickly. You can see there I can dive back into Harmony. I can dive back into Sky TV. It's perfect. It's a fantastic, fantastic application. So there we have it. That's a uh, that's a quick view of things we've got going on. Um, the gesture control in Nova is great, as you saw. I've just got it up to launch straight into Harmony. I've got it set up to launch straight into Imperium. And with a nice pinch and zoom gesture, I can jump straight into Sonos. So everything you need is conveniently and easy at your fingertips. Or, of course, you can launch in the more traditional way from the launcher bar. As you can see, launches very, very quickly. The other thing to mention in Imperi Home is that all of these widgets are, can be customized. So you can see here, I've swapped out a picture um, and dropped in a picture of a Sonos unit. You can view cameras. Um, you can create alarm situations. So you can see if a window is being left open or a door is left open. Very, very flexible. And recently, the guys have added a couple of new backgrounds. So that's starting to make it, again, a little bit more customizable. Um, to drop into things that you would like and you can see there it also goes to sleep if you, if you want it to So that's it in a nutshell a really nice tablet very very quick and simple to use very easy to set up a very nice screen Full home control from one single tablet which just gives you so many more options Than the traditional remote control and this is a fantastic piece of kit the Harmony remote control is great and the hub is what drives a lot of the stuff behind the screen, but the tablet is just more flexible. So one other thing to mention just before we leave, and that's a nice little app I have installed here. You will notice at the top of the screen there is a button which is ever present, which is a power button. Um, fantastic app, if I press that, it turns the screen off and it goes to sleep. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, post them and let me know.